Hello everyone. So I want to ask a question to all of you. How it will feel like if we buy a luxurious vehicle and you hear a uh, irregular sound, like you hear a uh, screeching noise from your vehicle. So it's uh, annoying, right? So if it is, if if we want, if our vehicles would not be that annoying by creating different noise, vibrations, and harness. So we OEMs, you are manufacturing the vehicle. They are doing testing on the vehicles. Like there will be many. They are reducing the noise vibration and harness unwanted soi- sounds from the vehicle. Additionally, nowadays we have a new generation, newer generation vehicle. We have a different features with infotainment system. We can talk with uh, our infotainment system. Like so we are saying, like Hello Siri, Hello Alexa, Alexa. Now, so we can speak. Uh, we can talk with the vehicle and. how qualitative speakers we are using in our infotainment system how clear sound we can hear from the vehicle so uh, for that for, for working and testing of this equipment this component the systems so we are at uh, head acoustics so they are working over with this and they are testing the speakers speech technology telecom in the vehicle additionally and wh of the vehicles as well so we'll start with the one of the equipment uh, which is for telecom specifically to detailly explain all of the things so we have mr uh, krishna with us i do he is working with uh, head acoustic germany okay so let's start let's discuss on this so sir uh, what we are calling it is a uh, this 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 one is called a binaural head by Bina- uh, yeah binaural head so uh, the reason it's called binaural is because like oral is means auditory and binaural so like uh, exactly like uh, two ears. yeah exactly two ears so binaural like one ear is like mono oral two ear is binaural uh, and the reason like why this is shaped in the in in the form of a human being is because because like when i am talking like my vocal cord is the sound source but when you are receiving my sound the noise is getting reflected on your torso your shoulder your neck uh, your ear and everything and like we have something called transfer functions like inner ear transfer function and outer ear transfer function so when uh, like for example like, like you explained in this testing like nbh like noise vibration harshness and testing we use a lot of sensors uh, the biggest use sensor is like a icp microphone like a normal uh, uh, like uh, like a like a 1 by 4 inch or a 1 by 2 inch microphone uh, i mean i ha- i have enough automobile experience you can use this like there is nothing wrong in that i have also used that in my past but this is like the next the next level the reason why this is the next level is because when you are using like a normal icp microphone it's like a point source but but when you are using this equipment the way you record and the way you play back data is exactly like how a human being is is that right where this terms comes like acoustic if you are saying like how we perceive that sound exactly like the, 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 at, the, at the end of the day like we want to make better products for our customers and customer customer customers are the kings and queen like when when you are driving like a uh, like a car you want the best out of the car and to refine and to optimize these things like that, that's exactly where, where, where like where our synergies meet so so for example like uh, this uh, this has like a two ears and these two ears have actually have two microphones inside and uh, like you explain like this is the telecom part so this is mostly used for um, infotainment testing audio testing like how is the how nice like like exactly like hi, hi siri hey alexa but now it's like hey audi hey mercedes and then uh, like these noise uh, like they they go into the ear and like you can record and you can play back them and this mouth has a opening and this is for like playing some white noise like for for for, for to, to create the sound feel and uh, here also like we have some uh, some some examples like some demo videos on how this speech and audio is working in the call like you have different categories like audio quality like emergency call hands free uh, you have like a bluetooth like a, uh, I, uh, and like uh, things like active noise cancellation so like uh, one of the doubt everyone knows like uh, everyone has like in vehicle there are multiple sounds are coming from outside from the vehicle okay already there are, we are playing music okay but still if you are saying like hello audi or hello mercedes how this been detected and or how clear it is being detected it is also been tested in this telecom part yeah this is also tested in telecom part but this is where the telecom and the nvh uh, domains like they meet because for example uh, like let's say you are inside your car it's kind of quiet the reason why it is quiet is because the car has a better build quality the door has a good seal and this is where my other division of a company called uh, nvh like in in terms like we say svp like svp stands for sound vibration and perception which is like a synonym that we use for nvh like noise vibration and harshness yeah so like hence we call icca to be asr so we are uh, testing on each and every part exactly so for that this uh, bi- binaural yeah binaural headset uh, but in 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 terms of telecom side 
Okay. Yeah. So now what about NBH? Yeah. For NBH, uh, can we just move here? Like uh, we have a lot of setup here that we have uh, set here for the Automotive Testing Expo. The one that you see here, it's called uh, acoustic camera. Like the term that we use is called VMFI. Like that is the trademark that we have given for this, uh, like this product. But uh, in in the general term, this is an acoustic camera. Okay. The re uh, uh, the, it has a camera and it has a mic. Exactly, it has camera and a mic. So like uh, like say you might be here, you might have heard of things like thermal camera. When you use this thermal camera, you know what is the temperature. So similarly, when you use this acoustic camera, uh, like uh, can you also please zoom here? I am standing in front of this camera and I'm when I snap my finger you can see these sound fields which which okay. get generated. The reason it gets generated is because this setup has like a MEMS microphone like it stands for microelectronic electronic uh, mechanical system. Exactly. It's like this it has like a total of 120 MEMS microphone and it has like uh, multiple cameras. Like why why many mics and why many camera? Because instead of hearing with two ears, it's it's better to hear with 120 ears. And instead of seeing with two eyes, you can see with four eyes. Uh, I mean, just kidding. The thing is, like uh, we human being, like we see with two eyes. Why do we see with two eyes? Because we can perceive the the stereo effect, the depth perception. So similarly, like when you have like multiple cameras, and like let's say like uh, you have an engine here, your engine is making some noise, and you do not know where this noise is coming from. And when you use this camera, say one noise is coming from the camshaft, one noise is coming from the crankshaft. This camera, like uh, like when you do the post processing in our software, you know, okay, the first noise is coming from like le let's say like two meter, but the second noise is coming from like say six meters. These kind of post processing you can do with our camera. And um, the basic configuration of this is these arms are kind of like a uh, mobile, arm. uh, mobile arms or or like a, a, a detachable or like an add-on. Like the basic configuration of this camera has just like sixty microphones and uh, uh, it has a cutoff frequency of like nine fifty kilohertz. But like let's say you want to more refinement. Then you can add these cameras, uh, sorry, these microphones, and then you get 60 more microphones, and then your cutoff frequency decreases to 400 hertz. So in simpler version, if uh, there are a low noise or low frequency noise, so we need more number of cam like, uh, mics. Yeah, more number of mics. But if uh, we have a high frequency noise, then we will need uh, less number of mics. Yeah, less number of mics. Vice versa. Yeah, vice versa. And one advantage is like, I mean, for this demo purpose, like we have connected it online, like we are running, we are controlling it to the laptop. But the cool thing is like, it is also possible to take this, like detach this, like a uh, control, the controls are here. Like you, you can control with the up down button. You can, I can start and stop a measurement and like uh, everything is possible. So for example, like if there is any space constraint, uh, it is possible for you to use this without this tripod. So that is one, one cool feature that we have. We are in industry, we are facing basically eight this challenges. Like if uh, there is a part, so there are noise, different noises are coming from A, B, C all together. So how to detect from this part noise is coming. So in that part, this will be helping nicely. Yeah, that's part. Uh, that part, this this will help very nicely. But I would also recommend to do some groundwork. Like you, uh, as an engineer, I don't expect you to just take this, do a measurement and tell me uh, A, B, C noise. You should do some groundwork. Say, for example, like when I say things like crankshaft, camshaft, uh, for example, like if your engine is run, running at like say 6000 RPM, then you ha you know the natural frequency, you know the operating frequency. So, and the, know about the resonant frequency. Exactly, or resonant frequency, or you should know like what parts has already gone inside. So, for example, when it is running at 6000 RPM, I know my camshaft is operating at 3000 uh, RPM, like uh, half. So, when you know these basic things, then you can make use of these things. Like, uh, just uh, I don't expect people to just take this and and do 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 like a magic. Yeah. So we should know about the fundamental of what really did what exactly. And so moving further, we have a uh, oh, more part of it. Yeah. So like here you can see like once you acquire the data, it is possible to do some filtering in the frequency domain, the time domain. You have a frequency spectrogram which is running. I can also go to the phase buffer. Depending on the uh, capacity of your laptop, like you can increase or decrease this phase buffer. So this means the last 20 seconds of data is stored in the RAM, like the, the local memory. And the last 20 seconds is just keep on playing and playing and playing. And uh, it is possible to apply like different filters, like since there are, since there are a lot of uh, microphones and cameras involved, you can apply a lot of filters like um, uh, neural, neural networks and like a neural deconvolution okay. to have a better resolution of the video. So we have one more thing like for if like same like what we have like for audio and speech, they have same setup for NVH as well. Let's see the other thing. Yeah. So to detect uh, NVH, we have uh, Bose 
analyzer and sensors in this part we'll start with the eight channel uh, analyzer we are calling it as quadriga so basically what it do, do is so it has eight channels so we can connect multiple mics from on this channels and we can detect about the uh, uh, detect the different noise vibration and rns and record it we can say we can test and record uh, analyze it what afterwards because it it has a recorder as well exactly and uh, so after recording we can do an analysis like which part or which specimen is good which can uh, work nicely in the vehicle yeah right? so for example like exactly like you said like uh, it's called squadriga 3 because it's the third generation of oh. this of this thing and uh, the, this one like it comes with a inbuilt uh, like a display so you, it's possible for you to go to uh, different channels it's just like like a touch and uh, like a plug and play the first two channels uh, like we normally say this is called a binaural headset so exactly like previously uh, previously exactly like uh, how i explained you uh, it works on the similar principle but uh, now i will just like make you make a cool thing so for example can you please wear this uh, binaural headset sure wear exactly like that previous binaural headset and the one here these two are actually microphones like on the left and right hand side can you can you please wear the uh, left and right the wearing right is yes yeah you are wearing it right towards okay so now what i'm going to do is right now it's in the recorder mode i'm going to make a very short recording okay i will stop the recording and i'm going to play back the last recording you tell me how, what is your perception Ah uh, yes. So I am hearing like it's in surround sound. I am hearing yeah, exactly. So I can detect like say from same distance that sound is coming. Exactly. Okay. So 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 this is this is this is why I emphasize on using binaural headset instead of the the normal ICP microphones. Like uh, the the like like how I explained before like because the sound is getting reflected from everywhere. Uh, when you use this technology, like you get a 360 degree sound. And for the places where you cannot wear this uh, this headphone yourself, like you can use. this uh, headset it also has like a left and right microphone and uh, for example like if you are uh, in a chassis dynamometer you can just put this on your passenger or co-passenger seat so you can measure the sound quality uh, in addition to acoustics like from my experience like a uh, lot of people don't really know what psychoacoustics like psychoacoustics is that branch of acoustics where you combine psychology and acoustics so for example i want as an engineer i want to design a product for my customers where they perceive like how how human beings perceive the sound like this is one biggest challenge for uh, people same thing i feel here like film what uh, my ear was hearing same i can feel the same recording exactly so so i, I imagine where you are sitting inside a car and like you are hearing a uh, gear noise engine noise like road noise wind noise and and it's possible for you to perceive all these noises and uh, like how i showed here like the the eight channel analyzer this one here uh, is called the head lab So for example the one biggest advantage of this is like it's it's a handheld like you you can go you can take wherever you want but the limitation is like it's eight channel but of course i mean you you can add an additional six channel module but the the solution that we have here is like a multi channel yeah we can stack multiple channels yeah, exactly so the module that you have over here the lab control it has like a 10 10 lemo ports so one controller can support up to 10 modules so like uh, let's say like uh, today you purchase a lab control and just a six channel module but after two years your boss says hey come on like uh, this is not needed like we we want to upgrade it up 60 channels uh, you know like the the limit is like more more than 500 channels yeah like uh, because it's also possible to combine two lab controls then you have 20 channels and like let's say you have 240 240 into 10 okay yeah as well yeah so other than this uh, nvh like So uh, in my vehicle, like if I'm testing my vehicle, there are multiple types of NVH, like while braking, while tire, like specifically if I'm talking about EV. So in EV, uh, NVH is so challenging. Now, tire industry is talking about low noise tire, low noise tire, because there is no sound of engine squeeze. Other road noise can be damped. Yeah. So how we can test it? Uh, so for example, like uh, I mean, you, you can of course use acoustic camera and also these solutions to test it. uh like one i uh, think is because like i i worked in automotive industry like we use a term called masking noise like when there was this ic engine this ic engine was making so much noise that you were not able to hear other noises now that you take away the ic engine you have a electric motor even the smallest noises like it, it disturbs people and this is exactly how i told the psychoacoustics will definitely come into play because the uh, the electric motors which is operating they have very tonal noise and we have a psychoacoustic descriptor called tonality so when you analyze the data instead of just saying okay this is like a 40 db okay this is 50 db not okay 
I want you to look further into psychoacoustic descriptors like loudness, sharpness, roughness, fluctuation strength, tonality, like there are a lot of things like articulation index, speech intelligibility index. So our engineers need to upgrade themselves and go go beyond like articles. So you have one more right? acoustic has one more equipment like sound C. Yes, sound C. So let's see like in which like for example I can analyze my tires uh, placing multiple tires of different brands, one from MRI upon how I analyze like which tire is best. Yes, we, we can of course go there. Okay, well, let's see our sound say. Yeah. Yeah. So this simulator that we have here, it's an NBH simulator and it's called sound seat. Like like you see, like you have a seat, we have a steering wheel. Uh, like two cool things I can tell about this. Like we have a collaboration with the IPG car maker software that you have. So that the people or, or the, the users who are using this, like they have a visual feel of like how the road looks like, like how, what speed they are going, what gear they are going. And on the right side, you have a small screen and our software called Presense. Like uh, you can uh, control this simulator using the software called Presense. And one cool thing is like uh, uh, you see like the steering wheel and there is a seat and the person is having a headphone. So the steering wheel has a vibration feedback. The seat has a vibration feedback and the person wearing the headphone has an auditory feedback. Oh. So now let me come back to the point where you told like as a, as a OEM or as a manufacturer you have different tires like tire 1, tire 2, tire 3, MRF, Bridgestone, Continental, uh, j j j j j just to name. So as an OEM like I want to validate these tires. Yes. So how do I validate? I need to acquire the data first. So let's say I, I take my car, uh, I put tire 1, I go for a measurement, tire 2, I go for a measurement, tire 3, I go for a measurement. You first do the homework of collecting all the data, okay? Then you come to this sound seat, you load all these data into a software and uh, you want to do this playback. So let's say I want to hear only the tire noise. I do not want to hear the wind noise. I do not want to hear the powertrain noise. Then you can select and deselect whatever sound sources that you want in the software. Oh, yeah. Nice. Then, uh, so same thing like what you were saying, like sharp as the yeah. everything we can test by after replaying it, then which is feeling better for the Exactly. So uh, on the topic of psychoacoustic, uh, of course, like the, the things that I told, like uh, loudness, tonality, roughness, these are objective analysis. So like when I'm uh, when I have a data, I say 40 dB, it's like 30 30 zones. But uh, when I hear it back, like I might say that it is too loud, but you might say it is not too loud. So this is why we need to do the subjective testing. We need to include a lot of people. Uh, we need to play the sound back to a lot of people, and you need to get, get a subjective opinion. And as an engineer, once you do this step, you need to come back to your lab, you need to correlate this objective and subjective thing, then you know how better you can refine your products. This is all about NVH and uh, acoust or and acoustic, how we can define our uh, speech and audio of the vehicle, NVH of the vehicle. So thank you yeah. for joining us. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you.